Walk down any busy street or glance at a freeway that is jam-packed with traffic and you will find people who are frustrated, discouraged, and without hope. The strange thing about life is there is a hard way or an easy way. Unfortunately, most are doing it the hard way. Millions of people across the globe got up this morning, pushing themselves to a workplace they do not like, working for a paycheck that does not meet their needs, and working in an environment that only stifles the creativity. In 1979, I was 19 years old. I was a janitor when I ran into my mentor who forever changed my life. The following is based on a true story. Come in. Sorry to bother you. Can I get your trash? Yeah, go ahead. We're all set. OK, thank you. Mr. Boyer, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Sure, Alonzo. Come on in. What's on your mind? I mean, how did you become so successful? Well, Alonzo, Success is really more like a journey than a destination. Why don't you take a seat? You know, on this pathway, you're gonna need about eight things. Eight things, wow, that seems like a lot of work. You know, 97% of all people have that mindset, and that's exactly why they never accomplish anything. But if you really wanna be successful, the first thing you're gonna need to have is you're gonna to have to have a dream. Really what a dream is, Alonzo, is that burning desire you feel in your heart that you feel totally compelled to bring on the outside. That's what a dream is. Dreams are the jet fuel to thrive in your life. Usually fueling your dreams comes from passion and purpose. When you live your life from passion and purpose, you experience so much more joy in peace and satisfaction in your life. Dreams require a team to make them happen. So remember, dreams take a team. Your dreams are your roadmap to your success. When you are dreaming of the impossible, it is only you that can make it possible to really manifest it in your life. You have to feel it in your heart, see it with your eyes to really make it possible. So tell me, what is it that you're dreaming? Dreams really important. A dream that's inside of you, unique to each of us personally, by design. That dream is the one that will pull you through the tough times in your life. But it has a purpose. That's why it's so exciting. It's there so that we can help the world. Because when we live out our dream, the world benefits. Today, I'm living my dream. I'm in awe of where I am. But you know what? I had a dream, and I'm living it. I encourage you to do the same. Don't ever let the dream stealers diminish or weaken your dreams in any way. Sometimes well-intentioned family and friends have a tendency to keep us pigeonholed in the roles that they're used to seeing us in. And once you share your dreams with them, they may see a lot of ways that it's not going to work out for you, and they want to share this with you in an effort to try and keep you from getting your hopes up. Well, life has some disappointments in it. Once you achieve one dream, it's so much easier to achieve the next dream and the next dream. And before long, you're living your dream every day and remember to put a deadline on your dreams because that transforms it into a goal and once you have a goal it's a lot easier to see how to get there where dreams come from is you make them up some of them are based on need like putting food on the table some are based on desire what's truly in your heart but the dreams that are usually the most profound are the ones that are the expression of your purpose or your mission now the difference between a dream and a fantasy like winning the lottery is that in a dream, you can design a strategy for getting there. But in my travels around the world, it's not that people never go to strategy, it's that they tend to go there too soon. And we compromise our dreams down. Dreaming, it's not about a fantasy world. It's about creating your own reality. And dreaming is actually expressing the deepest part of yourself. What you have come to do here, that comes forward in your dreaming. And you can't stay just with the dreaming in the fantasy world. It's about dreaming, making it in your reality. 
Now go inside yourself, feeling your soul, feeling your deep self, what you're really here to do, what's your vision? What is your dream to accomplish? Just don't create anything else than what you're here to do. Just focus on it. Live that dream from the moment you start your day till the moment you finish your day. I can tell you, living it, believing it, attracting it. In my first serious relationship, I remember one day I came home, my girlfriend sat me down and she let me have it. And she said something to me as if I was the lowest form of existence on a planet. She said, you're such a dreamer. And I knew right then, that's when that relationship had to end. Because to me, if you're not dreaming, you're not alive. And as time has gone on, I've realized that every successful person I've studied has been a dreamer. Walt Disney actually had a teacher when he was in grade school that ridiculed him and told him that flowers don't have faces. Imagine someone trying to limit Walt Disney's dreams. Look at what Walt Disney World has become and the entire dynasty he's created. I wonder how that teacher feels these days. The bottom line is Walt Disney actually said it better than anyone. If you can dream it, you can do it. The Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius said, dream big dreams. Only big dreams have the power to move men's souls. In 1987, not far from where we're at today, a discouraged, depressed comedian who'd had a rough night that night, got in his old Toyota, drove up Mulholland Drive to the top of Hollywood Hills and sat there looking out over the city, that view we've seen so many times in motion pictures. And he sat there and he thought about his life. And he took out a check that he had, a personal check of his own. He made it out to himself for $10 million and he dated it Thanksgiving 1995. Down in the memo section of the check he wrote, for acting services rendered. He tore that check out of the book and he stood there and he, he looked at it and he dreamed of the day that that would be real. That was the dream that he had, the dream that he carried. He stuck that check in his wallet and every time in the days ahead, when times would get rough, when the audiences would boo him, when it seemed like he had never lived his dream, he pulled that check out. That kept him going. Now, Jim Carrey that night was pretty conservative because by the time Thanksgiving 1995 rolled around, he wasn't making $10 million a movie. He was making $20 million a movie. As James Allen says, and as a man thinketh, dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, so shall you become. You know, you've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to make a dream come true? Do you know where dreams start? Dreams start by fantasizing. And I want you to think of this. As a little child, you were even encouraged to fantasize. But then we went to school. They called it daydreaming. They called it not paying attention, and bang, we had a lid put on it. Well, let's take the lid off. Let's get our imagination going. Let's fantasize. Let's sit down and relax and ask ourselves, what do I really want to do? What do I really want to do with my life? Build a dream in your mind. You see, your imagination is a mental faculty. It's one of the highest faculties you've got. It's what helps you get in touch with what's going on inside. We've got to quit living just through our senses. Quit going by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. Let's go by that inner eye of understanding. Fantasize. Ask yourself, what do you really want? I have a magnificent dream in my mind all the time. It's what keeps me going. And it's what's going to keep you going. Sit down. Forget about what the world tells you you can do. What do you want to do? It was a dream that got Edmund Hillary to the top of Mount Everest. Everyone said it couldn't be done. He believed it could. He was an ordinary beekeeper in Auckland, New Zealand. Where did he get the idea? Got it from the infinite. He dreamed it. Stop and think of those Wright brothers, a couple of bicycle mechanics in Dayton, Ohio. The whole world said that anything heavier than air is attracted towards the center of the world. We cannot fly, but we have. And you know, it took four years before anybody believed they got those planes in the air. Now think about it. They believed it because they dreamed it. Someone said they were listening to a song, birds fly over a rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? And that put us in the air. It was a dream that got them up there. It's a dream that's going to transform your life. Fantasize, build a big picture in your consciousness, and then really pay attention to everyone. They're gonna show you how to turn the dream into a physical reality. So once you have your dream in place, the next thing you're going to need is a desire. And the best way that I can explain desire to you 
is desire is like jet fuel for your dream. It gives you the power, it gives you the ability to go out there and take action on your dream. You know, I think I know how this works now. I, because I do have a dream and I definitely have a desire to have more and be more. Your real desires come to your mind often. You don't have to put anything on the mirror to remind yourself. They'll keep coming back to you over and over again, and they'll give you motivation. It all starts with a burning desire. Back in high school, I had a burning desire to play professional basketball. I had no clue how I was going to do it, and standing five foot eight inches tall, I wasn't the most likely to be a professional athlete. And I remember all through high school and college, many people would tell me that I couldn't make it to the next level. And it wasn't necessarily that they didn't love me. They just didn't want me to get my hopes up. Because what if I would have failed? That would have been a major disappointment. So what kept me on course to achieve my dream was the burning desire that I had. It basically kept me up late at night and woke me up early in the morning. I ate, slept, and drank basketball every day. And I'm proud to say eight years later, I was very blessed to play professional basketball for several years. And it all started with a burning desire. Desire. Let me tell you about desire. Inside of desire, there is this rebar called inspiration. And it is that which is an encouragement to you to do what many would consider to be absolutely impossible. I'll share with you the best example I can about desire. Before my wife became my wife, I was working on getting her to be my girlfriend. She and her family were going to their annual vacation, two weeks in Yosemite. Now, I'm 438 miles away from Yosemite. And the thought of not seeing her for two weeks, that wasn't going to work for me. So I knew I couldn't drive because my car couldn't have made it to Yosemite if it was all the way downhill. So I grabbed my duffel bag, thrown a sleeping bag, a few toiletries, whatever dollars I could scrounge up. At 3.30 in the afternoon, I am at the major intersection of the little town where I'm living. I'm hitchhiking. The concept of getting there, not a problem. I stick my thumb out. I'm on my way to Yosemite. How? I don't care. All I know is I'm getting there. 11 hours later, 2.30 in the morning, I am pulling in to the parking space across from their campsite, thinking to myself, I got here in 11 hours without a plan. So what's the big deal? Desire will make you do the amazing. Get a hold of your desire. You can do it. I've seen people sometimes go further in life with their desire and commitment than skill, experience, and even gobs of money. I met a young man who told me he was from Kenya, Africa. He was part of the Maasai warrior tribe, and I met him in Portland. And when I asked what he was doing there, he told me that as a young child, it had always been his dream to become a doctor. But there was no place to get trained, and you didn't leave the tribe. It just wasn't done. And he shared his dream with everyone, but everyone rolled their eyes, told him it was a fantasy, and told him to forget it but he never did. And around his 18th birthday, a writer came to visit. Turned out this guy worked for the Washington Post. He wrote Wilson's story. A couple in Portland happened to read it. In a matter of weeks, he was invited to apply for undergraduate work. And in a matter of months, he was accepted at the University of Portland. And I said to him, that's extraordinary. He said, no, Marsha. At that point, it was horrific because this amazing opportunity was being presented to me, but we didn't have the resources to send me off to America. He said, I did the only thing I knew to do. I prayed for a miracle. I used my deep desire. And you know what? That's what I got. Once you have visualized your dream, the very next step you have to do is find your desire. Now, where do you find desire? You find it at the store, and you buy it over the internet. You find it here, in your heart. Everyone has desire. Everyone has a strong desire to win. Everyone has a strong desire to conquer their fears. The great Napoleon Hill said it best. When your desires are strong enough, you will appear to possess superhuman powers to achieve. Everyone has a strong desire to succeed. Desire is where you go with your heart. When you have a desire, you feel it. You feel it right down here in the pit of your stomach. And the stronger it gets, it comes up and up, and pretty soon it's a burning in your bosom. And it moves up to your throat, and pretty soon you just have to tell someone. And when you tell them, they catch a spark. Some of them even get ignited and want to help you fulfill your desire. Because all of this desire is coming out of you. The universe sends in creative ideas. And when you take action on those, the activity you do is not exhausting. It's refreshing. It's invigorating. 
Why? Because you're doing what you love. Because you love what you do. You're doing your heart desire. If there's a desire that you are passionate about and you can visually see yourself doing whatever you desire, then start taking steps that are necessary to get there. It just takes one step at a time for whatever your heart really desires. You know, back in 1989, I was working for a finance company and really wanted to get to the executive level. I was working in a data entry department at the time, and I really saw myself really at this executive level. But I had to take steps in order to get there. And those steps were that I had to surround myself with these executives and auditors and whoever was in that actual 10th floor. And I had to really understand that I had to really put myself into that position, go back to school, be surrounded around them, understand what the executives really were all about. If there's a desire that you're passionate about and you can visually see yourself whatever your desire is, then start taking steps that are necessary to get there. It's just one step at a time to get whatever your heart really desires. The truth is, we always get what we truly desire. So think about what your desires are and just go for it. Desire is the key to motivation, it is the key to commitment, and it is the key to attaining any success you want to keep. When you have desire, everything is possible. You become unlimited. Nothing happens by chance. When you have a strong desire, the law of cause and effect comes into play in your life. Desire is the cause, and the effect is the result of your desire. When you have a strong enough desire, it puts out a particular vibration into the universe, and it's an absolute law that it must come back to you. Know what you want to create, and then become the vibrational match for it and receive it. You will do this if you have a strong enough desire. You know, I've listened to sales managers and vice president of sales for years saying if I can only build desire into a person, Generally, they didn't even know what they were saying. What is desire? Do you know, it comes from the Latin to give birth to the children. Desire is the idea that you build in your consciousness and turn over to your subconscious. Desire is the dream that's cooking in your universal subconscious mind, your emotional mind. Desire, Wallace Waddles from the Science of Getting Rich said, is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. Desire is the yeast that raises the dough. Desire is the gas in the engine. Without desire, you're never gonna do more than you're doing. How do we get it? We build the dream and we let ourselves get emotionally involved in it. We live it. It's called imagined reality. Become an actor. Think of how they do it. They get the script, they read the script, they memorize the script, they internalize the script, they become the script. That's how you build desire. Don't listen to the people around you. Don't listen to the naysayers. Remember, very, very small percentage of the population make things happen. You are going to make things happen, and you're going to make things happen because you're taking your dream and you're getting emotionally involved with it. Get that desire going. You will love what it does to you. The next thing you need is you need to have vision. Vision is not of the eyesight, but it's of the imagination. You see, with the eyesight, you can only see so far. But with the imagination, it's unlimited. You can see anything. In fact, there was a great philosopher that once said that only those who can appear into the invisible can do the impossible. Well, I think vision answers two questions. The first question is, where are we going? And the second question is, who are we becoming? And the great thing about that is that we get the chance to make it up. Most people are making up a tired vision, and it's not an inspired vision. See, it's our thoughts and actions that drive our vision, which gets us to the feeling that we're going to feel. And it's our feeling, our emotion, which drives our actions. And the actions obviously take care of the results. And so if you want good results, you've got to have great thoughts. And if you're not concerned about the results, let your thoughts go where they may. Have you ever been rock climbing? climb up the cliff, you get to a certain point and you're stuck right where you are. You were successful, you made it halfway up, but you haven't reached your goal. You don't know what to do, you can't let go, and the guide says, let go. Thinking, 
I let go, I'm gonna fall. Sometimes we're stuck on our minor successes and those minor successes keep us from reaching the top. The secret is to clear a space for your vision. Let go of the little things that are holding on to you so you can reach up, find that great hold and pull yourself to the summit. That's where the vision is. The part about vision that is so amazing is that it allows you to be creative about your desired end result. That's why vision is so critical. Let me share with you what happened to me. When I was leaving one business for another, in that transitional time, I didn't want to just like not show up. I wanted to leave with integrity with those people that I have been working with. So on January the 7th, during our annual goal setting time, I stood up to speak. And in front of my peers, 65 to 70 of them, I thanked them for the great experience. I encouraged them for the new year, and I said goodbye. And I told them, I walked in here with my head up. I'm leaving with my head up. I wish you the best. And when I did, there was a couple of moments of silence. They stood up. They acknowledged me. They gave me a standing ovation because I had the vision to believe that I could leave with integrity. You can do anything you want. Vision creates what you want. Make sure your vision is crystal clear. Imagine what every single day is going to be like. When my brother was in college, he was doing everything he could to get into the California School of Psychology. And the dean finally told him, you're in, congratulations. I just have one more question for you. Why would a positive, self-actualized individual want to surround themselves with negative, self-destructive people every single day? And my brother answered the question appropriately. He said he felt that he could create an environment that would help them to move forward and heal. But he had never really thought about what his day-to-day -day existence would be. And as he left this interview on the fourth floor of the building, he said he got down to the second tier in the stairwell. And he sat down and he put his head in his hands and he started to cry because he had worked so hard to this vision, to this goal that he had. And he had never realized what every day was going to be like and he ended up having to change direction. So make sure that your vision is exactly crystal clear in every way. What's it going to be like every day, every week, every month? Pick a vision of something that you will be passionately committed to, that you absolutely love where you want it to go. It's kind of like building a puzzle. When you build a puzzle, you pick the picture because it's beautiful, it's peaceful, it's challenging, it's motivating. Do the same with your vision. And then just like when you look back at the picture of the puzzle to help guide your next step, look at your vision. Take time every day to look at it and ponder on it. And pondering on it will, will guide you to your next steps. All accomplishments start with a vision. Take the architect, the architect who's building a building. They start out with rough sketches. It blossoms into this absolutely fantastic piece of architecture that's all his. He's left with the final end product. Everybody needs to have a vision. Without vision, you can't get started. If you can't get started, you cannot go after a goal. Get crystal clarity in your mind. Get your vision in your mind and go for it. Vision is something that you cannot see with your visual eye. With your actual eye, you can actually see something around you. That would be vision. But the mind's eye has a vision for something that's in your imagination. Powerful leaders have vision. And with that vision, they engage everyone around them to propel towards that vision. And through that vision, you want to articulate that to as many people as you possibly can for your vision to be able to come into fruition. It's important to have a vision in your mind, but it's just as important to see your vision in your mind. Your mind thinks in pictures. When you have a thought, your conscious mind changes it to a mental picture. Psychologists tell us that these pictures are one of our strongest mind powers, and you can use these inner visions to change your life. Create specific situations that you want to create in your life and experience them just as if they were happening to you right now in your inner vision. Use these mental images to resolve family and relationship problems, to change your finances, to create healing. No one will ever change their life 
until they see themselves in their inner vision in a different role. You know, it's been said by every great leader that ever lived, you've got to have a vision. You've got to have a picture, a long-range view of where you're going to go. I see vision almost like a, a, an image that flows from my consciousness and goes out and it gets broader and brighter and farther away. It's the long-range picture of what we're going to do with our life. I have my vision, you have yours. It's a multiplicity of things that you want to happen. And you know what? You know what really builds the vision in your mind? It's a strong desire to make something happen that's greater than what's happening in your life. It's a long-range picture. You see, you build your purpose. That's why you're living. And your vision is how you're going to execute your purpose. It's a multiplicity of goals that you see way out in front of you. You don't know how it's going to happen, but you know it's going to happen. It's the long-range vision of what you're going to do with your life. Build that vision and then start moving toward it. I understand what you're saying about vision, but how can I, I can already imagine everything going wrong with my plan. So how can I envision success when I don't even know how to begin? I mean, this is my only job. I didn't even finish high school. I don't even have any money saved. How am I supposed to be successful? Alonzo, you're using your imagination. You're just using it wrong. You're using your imagination to see all the things that you don't have and all the things that you're not. Use your imagination to see all the things that you want and all the things that you can be. For instance, let me ask you a question. When you were a kid, during Christmas time, did you ever get anything you really wanted? Yeah, once I got a 10-speed bike. Okay, now, two weeks prior to that Christmas, what did you do? Well, I thought about it all the time, and I even imagined myself riding it every day. Now, that was using your imagination the correct way. You saw something that you wanted. All of a sudden, you saw yourself riding a bike. You felt the emotion, the experience of it, and then you had it. You see, Alonzo? You can't think small and expect to live large. You can't think like a poor person and expect to live like a rich person. It doesn't work that way. My mentor told me one time, he said the only difference between a rich man and a poor man is his method of thinking, which leads us to our next principle. And that is you have to learn how to think right. You gotta learn how to think correctly. Ask yourself this question, what is thinking? Well, when you really think about it, thinking is the process of asking and answering questions all day long. Why am I not successful? What your brain does, it'll search answers, and it'll respond, well, maybe because we're not smart enough, or we're not good enough, or maybe we're not talented enough. Well, the flip side to that is, what if we learn to ask ourselves powerful questions like, how can I become successful? Your brain will start searching for answers like, maybe read a book like Think and Grow Rich, or go to a personal development seminar or maybe find a great mentor. We must pay attention to the questions that we ask ourselves and really condition our minds to ask ourselves powerful questions that will take us in the direction that we desire. You ever been running lost in thought? Turn a corner and there is the last person on the planet that you want to see. There, larger than life, was my ex-wife. I walked past her and I said, hi. She said, hi. And as I went on by, I thought, Wait a second, I've been carrying two people on this run, myself and a memory. Then I thought, what is right thinking? And I made a U-turn. My U-turn brought me back to her, and I said, how are you really doing? And she said, I'm doing OK. How are you? And we walked together for three miles and came to the parking lot where her car was. I didn't know it, but in that parking lot were our two grandchildren. They had never in their entire life seen their grandparents come anywhere together. What I learned on that trip was that when I let go of what I'm carrying and I have space to connect with somebody, wonderful things open up. That's right thinking. You really have to have a lot of right thinking. You need to have thoughts that are positive and that have energy and have belief and confidence. Thoughts are the ones like, what if, and I should have, and it won't work. And those are the negative thoughts that lead you into fear and anxiety. And then the anxiety and the fear lead you into not taking action. And then the not taking action leads you back to negative thoughts. And you're just in this horrible cycle. You need to find a way to break that cycle. Van Gogh once said, if you hear a voice inside you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. Find the voice inside you that tells you to paint. 
Thinking right is so important. It starts with positive thinking. Do this and you'll save a lot of precious time and energy just by thinking positively. Do this and you will achieve everything you want in life. You have two minds. You have a conscious thinking mind that's awake when you're awake. You have a subconscious mind that's always awake but never thinks. This is the one that creates your destiny. It has created the life you have right now. Life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. And in order to do that, you have to take control of your mind. Thoughts are habits in your mind reproduced in your physical world. You are where you are because of your habits of thought. If you want to know what a person thinks about, look at his life. You can control your life and your future by controlling the thoughts you feed your creative or subconscious mind. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between a Michael Jordan and someone who is just comfortable with their life with mild or no results? You got it. The difference is in their thinking patterns. So how is it that we create the right mindset? If we feed our mind positive things coupled with the right action, we will have great results. However, if we feed our mind negative things such as the news, disempowering things, frequencies that are negative, negative friendships, then we will tune into a lower frequency with negative results. My thinking had created the terrible, terrible life that I seemed to lead at the time. And I know there are people watching this probably who are in their own crisis and they can't imagine that they created that. You see, we don't have control over anything in our life. We don't have control over our spouse. We don't have control over our children for sure. We don't have control over our boss. We don't have control over the economy. The only thing we have control over is what we think. Using a technique called metacognition. Now that's a big word. It simply means thinking about what you're thinking about. You do that on a regular basis and you create a different pattern of thinking. You create different thoughts. Whatever you're gonna dwell on, you're going to expand in your life. When I was dwelling on lack, I got a lot more lack. It's almost like the universe says, that's what Vic wants, let's give him some more of it. When I began to dwell on abundance, abundance was attracted to me. Everything you have in life started with a thought by you or someone else. Your thoughts create your life. Your mind automatically reacts to the thoughts you give it and takes action on exactly what you're thinking. What occupies your mind? Movies, video games, TV filled with violence? Just as a magnet attracts, your mind attracts materials equivalent to its most frequent thoughts. That's why it's simply impossible for a negative mind to attract positive things. Think only of what you want, not of what you don't want. When you worry, you're gonna get more of what you don't want. That's a very destructive habit. The good news is, habits can be changed. Take charge of your thoughts and determine carefully what plays on your mind stage. What plays on your mental stage will soon come to play on your life stage. You know, it's very important that you get on the right road to a bright future. Thinking is the highest function the human being is capable of. You know, the great educator and late educator, Dr. Ken McFarland, he said 2% of the people think, 3% think they think, 95% would actually rather die than think. I remember Earl Nightingale said, if most people said what they were thinking, they would be speechless. Now you're probably sitting there and saying, everybody thinks. The truth is, very few people think. If you pay attention to what most people are doing, it's obvious they're not thinking or they'd never do what they're doing. Pay attention to what they're saying. They'd never say what they're saying if they're thinking. I want you to begin to really think. See, mental activity does not constitute thinking. Your senses pick up actions that are going on around you. That's mental activity, but that's not thinking. There's a phenomenal power that flows to and through you. And as it flows into your consciousness, you have a reasoning factor. It gives you the ability to take and build little pictures in your consciousness because we think in pictures. And as we bring these pictures together, we build ideas. Well, we want to get involved in right thinking. That's the thoughts that's going to get you to where you want to go. Now, it's easy to get involved in wrong thinking. That's where we're thinking of why we can't do it. You see, if you knew how to do it, you'd already be there. The trick of life is to enjoy the trip. Enjoy how you're going to do it. And you're going to do that by right thinking. I know I can. 
I know I can, and I'm going to do it, and I've just got to think how. And one thought leads to another, and one step leads to another, and pretty soon, the dreams and the desires have manifested. You've got to keep thinking the right way. Don't listen to all the people around you. They're talking about why things can't be done. Quit reading the daily newspaper. It's full of nothing but terrible things. You won't find good thoughts in the newspaper. Quit listening to the news. Watch inspirational films. Listen to inspirational CDs. Read good books. Pay attention to the people you're associating with. Get right thoughts flowing through your consciousness because it's going to change your life. That's what it'll do. Right thinking is vitally important. I'm beginning to realize that I could have more and be more, that I'm not limited like people said I was, that uh, I don't have to be a janitor my whole life. I mean, by using these principles, I could really reach my dreams. And you're telling me that my thoughts create my reality? That I actually get the things I think about? That's exactly what I'm telling you. And that is why the next principle, or the law, is so important. And it's called the law of attraction. You see, everything that you have, everything that I have, we brought into our lives, good, bad, or indifferent. It came to us because we attracted it through this great law. In fact, some people call it the great secret to life. It's an immutable law called the law of attraction. The law of attraction is based on what you focus upon, expand upon. Like attracts like. So if that were the case, focus on your thought and your feelings and make sure that they align. Be a detective in your own life and figure out what's getting in the way of you producing results by identifying those subconscious negative beliefs. Well, we live in a universe that's made up of vibrational matter or energy. And the reality of it is, is anything we want to do, be, or have is out there. It's available to us. The challenge is we're not making ourselves available to it. Let's take joy, for example. If we go out there and we act more joyful, we start to interact more with people that are joyful. We start to bring in situations that bring us that joy. And so the trick is to just go out and feel that as much as you can, and that will start to attract the things that you want for yourself. Look and see how you've attracted this magnificent teacher to help you. You must have had the thought you wanted this, otherwise it would have not happened. Who do you want to teach you more? Be clear, do your research. Immerse yourself in these thoughts and they will be attracted into your life. Some of the most successful people in the world would love to help people like you. A la gente con más ventajas en el mundo, les encanta ayudar a personas como a ti. The secret is, the law of attraction is no longer a secret. The fact that you are listening to me right now means that the law of attraction works. It's all around us. You like it or not, it's there. What you think about, you attract. It's as simple as that. My take on the law of attraction is a little different. It's interpersonal attraction. How do you attract people to you? When I propose the platinum rule as opposed to the golden rule, the platinum rule simply stated is do unto others as they would have you do unto them. In other words, treat other people the way they want and need to be treated. And that's a way that you can develop rapport with people quicker, deeper, and longer lasting. The law of attraction simply states, like attracts like. What you focus on the most, you'll attract in your life. The problem is, too many people focus on the things they don't want instead of the things they do want. They spend their entire lives running away from the bad instead of running towards the good. How many times have you caught yourself thinking, why do I always get stuck in the longest line at the grocery store? Or, this always happens to me. Or, I knew that was too good to be true. By doing this, you're programming yourself with negative information. If a situation seems to go against you, tell yourself, hey, this is actually working in my favor. I may not know how or why, but I know it's working in my best interest. Say this to yourself as many times as you need in order to get back on track. You never know. That little extra weight at the supermarket may have saved you from being involved in that automobile accident you just passed on the way home from the store. As an old lawyer, I can tell you laws are principles that work for everyone. And the law of attraction, I can tell you, it works perfect. Each time you use it, each time you apply it, you will actually be able to attract your dreams, your visions that you want to establish in your life.
It's about really connecting with the vibration that what you want to focus on. So don't just focus on what you want to accomplish, but focus on the vibration, the energy that it is. So if you want success, connecting with the vibration of what success is. If you want love, connecting with the vibration of love and experience that vibration in your body, in your spirit, in your mind. Experience what it actually does to you. And the moment you experience it, you feel it, you will start radiating it out. And then the universe will bring it in very gently on the right moment, the right place, with the right people. In America, our Constitution guarantees us life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And while that's good, Obviously, I think the pursuit part is where a lot of people get messed up. Pursuit of happiness means we're chasing things that we want. When we feel that we're attracted to someone, are we attracted to someone because they're chasing us around all day long? Hardly. See, what you find out is when you're chasing something, it goes further away from you, like swimming after a ball in a pool. It keeps going further and further away. We need to learn how to stop pursuing things and start attracting them. You know, we talked about our dream, we talked about desire, we talked about vision, and we talked about right thinking. Now we're going to talk about the law of attraction. Do you know, the law of attraction is a secondary law. There's a lot of people talking about it that don't really understand it. It's a secondary law. You attract according to the vibration you're in. The law of vibration is the primary law. And you vibrate according to your thoughts. See, all the great leaders have agreed that we become what we think about. And we truly do become what we think about. They've disagreed on virtually everything else. On that one point, they're in complete unanimous agreement. We become what we think about. That's why right thinking is so important. And as we get emotionally involved with our thoughts, it controls the vibration we're in. You see, your body is a molecular structure. This thing is a massive energy and a very high speed of vibration. In fact, if you put your body in front of an infrared television camera in a completely dark room, you'd see you're nothing but a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. As you change your thoughts, the vibration you're in changes. Way back in the 30s, a man named Simeon Curlian perfected Curlian photography. And you can actually photograph the energy leaving the body. As you change the thoughts in your consciousness, the vibration you're in changes. Now, I want you to think for a second. What is coming into your life? Pay attention to the people that are coming into your life, the thoughts that are coming into your consciousness, the things that are happening to you. You're attracting everything. You attract it by virtue of the vibration you're in. Now think of this. When we are consciously aware of our vibration, we don't say I'm consciously aware of being in a positive or a negative vibration. We say I feel good or I feel bad. Feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. So we want to get involved in the right thoughts, get emotionally involved, that'll control the vibration we're in, and that dictates what you attract. You attract like energy. The people you're attracting, they're like you. They think like you. The things you're attracting, you're in harmony with. And if you don't like what's coming into your life, change your thinking. Get really involved emotionally with your dream. And when you do that, just know that this whole universe operates in an orderly way. Dr. Werner von Braun, who is the father of the space program, he said that the natural laws of this universe are so precise that we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, we can send people to the moon, and we can actually time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. He also said these laws must have been set by someone. That's a subject for another time. But understand this, you are in a high speed of vibration right now, and whether it's positive or negative is gonna dictate what you attract. Think of what you want to attract and begin to get into that vibration. The law of attraction is very important. It's everything. Now, Alonzo, you're not even taking any notes. You know, I was never one to take notes in school. I think it's just too much work. Taking notes is so important because it's your first step to becoming an effective leader. Now, listen, nobody wants to follow a leader that doesn't know where he's going. And leadership is nothing more than developing those associations around you, the people that you surround yourself with. And those people become your mentors, your teachers, your friends, and your clients. And if you don't get anything else of this entire conversation tonight, remember this, who you listen to is going to determine what you get, what you have, and where you go. And that's the truth. 
So you wanna look at the people around you, your associations, and ask yourself this vital question, Alonzo. Is this the team that's gonna lead me to my dream? And if the answer is no, you need a new team. The people you're associating with are either building you up or they're tearing you down. There are some people who are so supportive, they leave you feeling like you can do just about anything. Then there are others who are so consumed by their own self-doubt that over time they start to rub off on you and even you become discouraged. My wife and I changed the group of friends we were associating with and almost immediately we started attracting a new group of friends with the same positive outlook on life we had. We were amazed at the increase not only in the positive results in our life, but our bank account reflected a major increase as well. Now I'm not suggesting you dump all your friends. Just surround yourself with the ones that truly support your dreams and aspirations. Mentors will teach you principles, tools, and give you information from all the learning experiences, the mistakes they have made, learn from them. Then surround yourself with people that ask more of you than you asked of yourself. They not only support you, they also give you feedback. People are either supporting you in reaching your goals or holding you back from your magnificent destiny. La gente se está apoyando a realizar tus metas o alejándote de tu destino magnífico. Ideas live within us, and they only take shape and form when we speak them out loud. But the sound only has meaning when it's heard by someone. So there's a sequence. For your words to have the power of convincing someone else, that someone else has to be there. And even more importantly, that someone has to be somebody who can make a difference. When you have an idea and you want to make a difference, think it. Put it in the most powerful words that are possible, and then share it with someone else. But for that idea to really have an effect, to really change the planet, the people that you share it with have got to be powerful and doing something. Surround yourself with powerful people. The only difference between you today and you in five years will be the quality of your ideas, the power of the words that you use to express them, and the quality of the people that you are associated with. From idea to word to association, together we can change this planet. The number one way to experience greater ease and shortcuts on getting what you want is to share your dreams with other people. Can you share your dreams with clarity so people get it, express it with passion so people want to help you? And then very critically, make specific requests that makes it easy for people to say yes. Associate people who can help you get what you want. And most importantly, invite and inspire other people to join you. The way to do that is to make specific requests and make it easy for them to say yes. If they say no, ask them why. People often say no when we're asking for too much or they're not clear about what you're asking for. If anyone tells you they succeeded by themselves, they're probably not being completely honest. Even if you're super smart and work extremely hard, it's not enough in today's world to be successful. You need to build powerful partnerships and powerful relationships. To succeed in life, it's not just what you know, it's who you know, supported by what you know. It's who you surround yourself with in your circle of influence. When the universe brings to you what you want and what you desire, it's usually through other people. You are as successful as the people you surround yourself with. Who you associate with and keep as friends really makes a difference. There's an old saying that goes, if you lie down with dogs, you come up with fleas. But the opposite is also true. If you fly with eagles, you soar to levels you only dreamed about. For example, if you were to take the five people that you spend the most time with and you were to average out their income, your income will be exactly the same, give or take about 5%. That also works for your health, for relationships, and also level of success. So the moral of the story is carefully choose who we associate with because that could literally mean the difference whether or not we succeed in our life and also our level of fulfillment. One of my mentors, Charlie Tremendous Jones, is fond of saying the person you are today versus the person you'll be five years from now is a result of the books that you read and the people you associate with. So I propose that you associate with people who really truly want to see you succeed and that you, you, you're in the middle of things, that you, you have mentors and role models above you and you have people, mentees or protégés uh, below you 
who see you as their mentor and role model, not people who are whiners or losers, but associate with winners and keep in touch with them, share ideas with them. One of the most important things that you can do for yourself in achieving success in your life is to have great associations. Did you ever notice how you can hang out with certain people and when you walk away, you just feel great. You want to conquer everything there is to conquer in life and you feel good. These are the people that make you feel like you could look at a mountain and you can climb that mountain. You can get to the top of that mountain. Not only have you achieved the goal, but you're looking around at a whole world of more goals that you want to go after. Those are the people that you want to hang around with. So when someone new comes into your life, just think, is this a person that can take me to the top of that mountain? Those are the people to keep in your life. I want to ask you a question. If you had children, would you want them to grow up to be like the people you associate with? A lot of people will say no. But if you have children, that's probably what's going to happen. You see, the people you associate with have a lot to do with who you are. You know, Carl Manager from the Manager Foundation down in Topeka one time said that environment is more important than heredity. And he's right. The people we associate with have a greater bearing on where we're going in our life than what's built into the genes at birth. Charlie Tremendous Jones, a wonderful human being, he said, we're nothing but the expression of the books we read and the people we associate with. I have a friend of mine, Jane Wilhite runs a large seminar company, Psy Seminars, on the West Coast. And she said that she doesn't want to associate with anyone that doesn't think she's special. And when she said that, I'm thinking, whoa. But then I thought about it. I thought, she's right. Why would you want to associate with anybody that doesn't think you're special? See, if they don't think you're special, they don't think they're special. They're probably involved in the wrong ideas, the wrong thoughts. And you're picking up their energy when you're around them. Now, I am very selective about the people that I spend a lot of time with. I want to spend time with people who are right thinkers, who are dreamers. They're into big ideas. They want to make something enormous happen in their life. And by mixing with them, when I'm not thinking, I'm picking up their thoughts. Pay attention to the people you're associating with. Think about them. Think about the people you'd like to associate with and then become friends with them. There's no trick to building friends. Be friendly. That's how you do it. People you associate with are very important to you. Okay, Mr. Boyer, do you think you can help me get started with everything you just taught me? Because I really want to make a change in my life. Alonzo, you can know all the principles of success in the world. You could read every book. But if you never take any action on your dream, nothing will ever happen. You see, actions are what produce results. If you show me your results, I'll tell you what your actions have been. not sure what to do, you need to take one step. Just start your action. Start getting things in motion. You'll find out pretty soon whether or not it's the right thing to do. But you have to start with at least taking one step. To create our dream life, we know it's all about taking action. John Asaraf, one of my mentors, once told me that if it was just about knowledge and information, every librarian in the world would be a millionaire. It is the application of information that creates true results. The action steps that we take to reach our goals don't have to be a quantum leap. Sometimes we are conditioned to want instant results and we get disappointed if we don't get them. But it is those simple action steps, simple acts of discipline that compounded over time create massive success. Let's think right now of what we want to achieve. What is an action step that we can take this very minute to get us closer to achieving that outcome? Then let's go. Take that first step and take action now. Taking action simply means being 100% committed to your goal and spending a certain amount of time each day working on that goal. You must expect positive results in order to achieve positive results. Winners expect to win and losers expect to lose. Vincent Lombardi, one of the greatest football coaches of all time said, we never lose, but sometimes the clock just runs out on us. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. Taking action starts with living that belief every single day. To have the life and the business you want, you must have a clear plan of action, then take action on that plan. 
every day do at least five things from your plan towards your goals, you will find that it is those little steps that will bring big results into your life. Vas a ver que esos pasos pequeños te van a traer grandes resultados en tu vida. Taking action and everything you do will result in getting everything you want in your life. Start taking the steps to take the action and you will have the results that you are looking for. Ask yourself, where do you want to be five years from now? Because it's what you do today that will make that difference. Fear has a tendency to keep people where they are. And there's really nothing to be afraid of. You have to ask yourself, what's the worst case scenario? The odds are the worst case scenario is never going to come to pass. Resolve to remove any roadblocks that are in your way between you and your dream. And remember to do what you love. Then you'll love what you're doing every day. One of my mentors introduced the line of a poem to me several years ago. And the line is to fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of long distance run. The unforgiving minute is that period of time that you let slip away without working towards your goals. I had the opportunity to meet a gentleman several years ago, good athlete. Every day, he's in the gym, he's out working out, and I asked him, his name was Earl, Earl, do you ever not feel like going to the gym? Do you ever feel like not working out? His answer to me was, well, of course. I said, well, then what do you do? He goes, I simply put my shoes on. Put my shoes on. Words that just spark and get him fired up and get him moving. So the next time you're focused or the next time you're working on your dream and it's, you know, I really don't want to do it. I really don't think I can. Just put your shoes on. Take that action and you will achieve your goal. I'm a big advocate of that old Nike quote, just do it. Perfectionism paralyzes, paralysis by analysis. And it's especially true when you have big tasks. You put it off, you procrastinate, break big tasks into small tasks and just do it. My mother was fond of saying to me, don't go the extra mile, go the extra inch. It's a lot easier. You know, I've been in the business that I'm in now, teaching people these ideas for 39 years. I have traveled all over the world. Our company operates all over the world. We literally train people to teach these ideas in our company. And you know, I have seen a lot of people that study this information. They've got great libraries of CDs, books. You know, they hang out with people that they love discussing this with. They don't do anything. Nothing's happening in their life. They honestly believe if they just talk about it long enough, it's going to happen. Well, they're wrong. Talking about it doesn't make it happen. I love a saying that the Quakers have. They say, pray and move your feet. You've got to get up and get out there and make it happen. If you stop and think of the people that really are the producers in this life and watch them, their days are busy. They have a long list of goal-achieving activities they get out and they make them happen. They don't wonder what they're gonna do when they get up in the morning. That was decided on before they went to bed. Now, I'm not saying they don't go to the cleaners and maybe drop into the bank or pick up bread on the way home from work. I'm not saying they don't go out to the theater or associate with people. They do those things, but they have a list of activities every day that are goal-achieving activities. And they have those all decided before they go to bed at night. I want to make certain that you really understand this. You've got to know what you're going to do tomorrow before you go to bed tonight. Get your mind at work. Goal achieving activities. You see, some people accomplish more in a week than other people do in a year. Some people accomplish more in a month than other people do in a lifetime. I do more in a month now than I did in the first 26 years of my life. Why? I do it because I'm following the process that you're learning. It's very important that you're active. Get into action. Now, I shared with you seven things on your pathway to success. But there's one thing that you need, one last principle, and that is you have to believe. When nobody else believes in you, when no one else is going to believe in your dream, 
you got to believe in your dream. You have to have faith. And faith, Alonzo, is nothing more than your ability to peer into the invisible so that you can grasp onto that which is incredible, so that you can go out and do what all the masses say is impossible. That's what faith is. You have to be the keeper of the flame. You can't hire anyone to do that, and you can't delegate that job. It's about imani faith. You have to believe more than anyone else. Once upon a time, there was a young girl who didn't believe in herself. She wanted more out of life, but didn't quite believe she could have it or deserve it. Then came a mentor who taught her that anything was possible and believed in her more than she did in herself. It was at that point that a seed of belief was planted, which sprouted into a beautiful blossom of faith and love. Thanks to that angel who believed in me, my life has been blessed with great success and abundance. And so how do we create that belief in ourselves by focusing on our faith and the endless realm of possibilities. One of my mentors taught me that if we do what we fear the most, then the death of fear is certain. It is then that we can start walking the journey of true abundance and fulfillment. With faith, you can do the impossible. If you believe in your dream, then it can lead you from a prison into the palace. It did it for a young man named Joseph in the Bible. If you believe in your dream, then no one can steal it from you. You've got to have a belief. You have to believe in yourself. And that belief has to be strong. It needs to be powerful. When you have a strong, positive belief, that energy goes out into the universe. And the universe, as always, responds with abundance. So if your belief is positive, good, or if it's negative or bad, whatever that is, you're going to get the same response no matter what. A French general once said that there is no weapon on earth more powerful than the human soul on fire. Catch fire, get out there, positively believe and the universe will be your ally. Believe, this exists out of two words, be, life it's about being the life you really wish from the moment you start in the morning till the moment you go to sleep and even beyond that in your dreams so everything you do your actions your thoughts your feelings your spiritual experiences every day it's from that belief that you want to accomplish something it's very important that you act from it you live it in everything you do your thoughts your feelings your actions your spiritual experiences it has to be from that belief in yourself and knowing that whatever people say about you or about what you want to accomplish it's their ideas and it's their belief systems you just have to focus again on yourself and say this is what I believe that's what I want to bring forward you believe it for yourself and from there on you will experience that the world will start acknowledging and accepting your beliefs and the more you believe in yourself I can tell you the world with one day will accept what you believe in. So I tell you, live it, believe it. In the Bible it says if we have faith but the size of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain. And while it's understandable, I think a lot of people really actually get that confused. See, our brains can only entertain one thought at a time. So if we're thinking but a mustard seed of faith, it's all faith. However, if we have a mustard seed of doubt, it's all doubt. So when life really will start coming to you, when your goals will start being achieved very, very rapidly, it's when you get the concept. When my life took off and things started working for me in every way possible, it's because I adopted one core system. And that was in order for me to get to where I wanted to get to, I had to have a 100% total absence of doubt. You gotta believe. To me, believing is having a high level of confidence, knowing that you're going to achieve your vision, no matter what shows up that may lead you to believe otherwise. Uh, we all have to have a level of belief. What I like to do is play on the word confidence, though, and break it up and spell it C-O-N-F-A-D-U-N-C-E. And con is the root word meaning 
with. And FA is for frequent affirmations. In other words, throughout your day, affirm what you want. Actually feel it where you're feeling as if you've already achieved it. And then D-U-N-C spells dunce. And basically what that means is just be smart enough to be dumb enough to not worry about having to know it all before you get started. Just go out there and do it. If you look at any success, there's way too much that just showed up and uh, was not planned or calculated. It just showed up when it needed to. And you have to kind of have faith about that and trust that. So if you have faith and know that that can happen, you'll get what you want. You know, unhappy, sick, broke people are under the illusion that they have to achieve something before they can feel happy or successful, while happy, healthy, and wealthy people just happily achieve. And there's a world of difference. The choice is which world do you want to live in? In 1996, my family and I were evicted from our home. A year later, we lost the last automobile we had. And in 1997, I earned so little money that I qualified at the federal poverty level. Now, I took and scraped together enough money during all that time because I realized I had to change something in my life. And I made it to a seminar in Jacksonville, Florida. That evening, Saturday evening, as crystal day as it was then, I heard from the stage 13 magic words that changed my life. The size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. The size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. Those words rocked my life because I knew instantly that that was the solution that I was looking for. I knew instantly it was the piece of the puzzle that I needed to put my puzzle together. So I began an earnest, earnest, diligent effort for changing my belief. And magical things seemed to happen. Over the next 90 days, I began to energize people and opportunities into my life that hadn't been there before. Within six months, I'd won a national sales contest. And within a year, I was making a six-figure income Several years later, a seven-figure income. The power of belief is incredible. You cannot experience anything in life that you don't first believe. You cannot experience something you don't believe. You will never be rich if you believe yourself poor, no matter how much money you have. And you'll never be poor if you believe yourself rich, no matter how little money you have. It's all in the power of belief. You know, way back around 1900, William James from Harvard, great psychologist, he said, believe and your belief will create the fact. But you know, if you look in the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Koran, the Torah, any good book, every one of them will tell you, you've got to believe. How do we develop beliefs? Well, the truth is most people don't. Most people inherit their beliefs. That's why they don't do much more than their parents, their grandparents, and their great-grandparents. And you'll see a long string of people, they all do much the same thing. I was doing that until I was 26. Then I picked up a book by Napoleon Hill, and I read where he said there's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. He said nobody's ready for a thing until they believe that they can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief and not mere hope or wish. And we said open-mindedness is essential to belief. Closed minds will not inspire faith, courage, or belief. And he said, remember, it takes no more effort to demand abundance and prosperity in your life than it does to accept misery and poverty. So you see, the key factor here is believe. If you don't believe, you're not ready. Now, I also found from another mentor of mine, Leland Valvandewal, who's gone now, God bless him, he said our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief will change. Well, you know, my income went from 4,000 a year to 175 a year, and then it went over a million. And I've earned millions of dollars. What happened? I hadn't gone to school. I had two months high school. I had no business experience. In fact, I had a bad work record. But as I got in to these books and these CDs, and as I started to pay attention to my mentors, my coaches, what I really did was start to evaluate who I was. And I got to the point where I was absolutely fascinated with who I was. If you just study your body, it'll blow you away. Do you know your mind is a, an electronic switching station? It alters the vibration that you're in. That controls what you attract. So do you see, as you start to study this, do you know that the blood circulates through hundreds of miles of passageway in your body every 33 seconds? It carries all the food in and all the garbage out just like that in one sweeping change. This is all happening. We're probably not even paying attention to it. How's that happen? 
it happens because there's something phenomenal about you and about me. And as we start to study it, do you know what happens? Our belief about what we're capable of doing changes. My belief about who I was and what I was capable of doing changed. See, I thought I was my name, but I'm not really Bob Proctor, that's my name. This isn't me, this is my body. You've never heard anybody phone into work and say, body's not coming in today, it's sick. Now, there's something phenomenal about you. You are God's highest form of creation. And as you study, you're gonna to start to believe new things about yourself. And as you believe, it'll be done. You see, your belief is very important. Remember what Hill said? Open-mindedness is essential to belief. You've got to be prepared to throw away some of your most cherished beliefs when you learn something new about yourself. Remember where I started. Very few people develop their beliefs. Most inherit them. You've got to have real strong reasons for all of your beliefs. And as you start to think, you can find many of your old beliefs will fall away. And you're going to believe in you. There's something phenomenal about you and about me. Let's make sure we show that in our actions and the results that we're getting in our life. Now, do you know, you're at the end of a series of just phenomenal information. You have watched and listened to some of the greatest teachers in the world. If you were to hire them, it would cost you probably millions of dollars. And you've sat and listened to all this phenomenal information. Well, let me summarize for you. You can take all this information, you can gather it in your consciousness, you could write an exam on it and pass the exam and change nothing. Why do you think there's so many brilliant people wandering the streets that are broke? Think of the people that are leaving school with phenomenal degrees. They never make anything happen. You and I have been programmed. We're programmed genetically, and then we're programmed environmentally as, as infants. Our subconscious mind is wide open at birth. And whatever's going around us goes right into our subconscious mind. Now, as these ideas go into our subconscious mind over and over and over, through repetition, they start to become fixed in our subconscious mind. Now, let me explain. A fixed idea is known as a habit. A habit is an idea that you act on without giving any conscious thought. When you got up this morning, you got dressed. You didn't think of getting dressed. You might have thought of what you were going to put on, but whether you're going to wear clothes or not never entered your mind. It's a habit. When you sit down to eat, you don't have to think, how do I get that food in my mouth? You automatically do things. You weren't born with this information. It's programmed into your mind. It's part of your conditioning. Well, you and I have been conditioned. There's a multitude of habits in our subconscious mind. When you pull all the habits together, it's called a paradigm. A paradigm is a multitude of ideas in your subconscious mind. And if that paradigm doesn't change, nothing in your life will change. God bless you. Understand it. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Boyer, do you think you can help me get started with everything you just showed me? Because I would really like to change my life around. You know, Alonzo, you're a sharp young man, and I think you have great potential. And I think you have a great future, so I do want to help you. I'm going to give you this book, and I want you to read it. And then I want you to come to my office once a week, and we're going to go over these eight strategies. Can you do that? Can you commit to that? Most definitely. Thank you so much, Mr. Boyer. Sorry, I didn't realize anybody was here. Can I get your trash? Yeah, go ahead. Do you mind if I ask you a question? From janitor to business entrepreneur, if I could do it, so can you. Now go get yourself a mentor. Begin everything with a gracious heart and attitude. I'm happy and grateful now that I can help crowds with my raps. All I speak is just theory, use my own car, no one else can steer me, you hear me? Put in practice what they write, or it just becomes a dusty playwright. And it ain't nice to sell the rights of your soul, for bites of gold and someone else to control. Only through the power of mentorship, you can tower abundance and enter it. A good mood is a matter of choice, let your high self be your passionate voice. I choose to be a good mood catcher. I now see myself in truth as a 
strong, vibrant, significant, useful, valuable, worthwhile, meaningful, youthful. Love in and fulfilled individual who large crowds of folks do listen to. Begin, focus on God within, not problems from lack of dividends. Strength and faith in God is the physical cause to erase effects of money flaws. Universal law, think differently, stand tall, see God is all self sufficiency. Outer scenes ain't shifting me, illusions don't carry me. So within the source of my prosperity, that's inner clarity, abundance in my presence. Since it's in all, I fly with contentment And gold sand buries me in thick waves Results show whatever I ask, it pays No, it ain't hidden, inside it's living Knock on the door and the supply's given That knowing of in an infinite stash Focus on that to get limitless cash A good mood is a matter of choice Let your high self be your passionate voice I choose to be a good moon catcher. I now see myself in truth as a strong, vibrant, significant, useful, valuable, worthwhile, meaningful, youthful, loving and fulfilled individual who large crowds of folks do listen to. Accept the truth, the presence, best of proofs. Armies of the mind will bless the troops. Soldiers who win wars within and listen with conviction. Know you're all sufficient, dissolve the prison. Unlock the supply, not victims of what we spot on the side. Be fulfilled, prepared with all might. See lavishness in affairs of all life. What you express holds right. Why not express completeness? A whole vision of love and free bliss. Know it's done, though may look invisible. Surrender your spirit, it works out continual. Think it for the good it's brought and yet to be brung. As if it's become, so the feeling is one. With the voice that God's in gives instruction. Then dreams grow ripe, ready for plucking. A good mood is a matter of choice. Let your high self be your passionate voice. I choose to be a good mood catcher. I now see myself in truth as a strong, vibrant, significant, useful, valuable, worthwhile, meaningful, youthful, loving and fulfilled individual who large crowds of folks do listen to. Real or imagined, mistaken or intentional. Those who wronged you are ones you learned a lesson through. Forgiving them in your heart is the principle. Love unconditional is the life to be living through. Keep to yourself what you practice. Bringing money is a spiritual tactic. So no negative energy gets in the clearance. Cause all is rich regardless of appearance. What you want for you, gotta want for all your witnesses. Give and receive in joyful extensiveness. Make sure your kids and mate have best lives. All day see them with gracious fresh eyes Don't overindulge when it comes to sex needs There are many ways to stay stress free Work on yourself to make life complete That's how you win abundance meet A good mood is a matter of choice Let your high self be your passionate voice I choose to be a good mood catcher I now see myself in truth as a Strong, vibrant, significant, useful, valuable, worthwhile, meaningful, youthful, loving and fulfilled individual who large crowds of folks do listen to. I'm happy and grateful now that I can help crowds with my raps.